the middle of what seems to be your darkest hour. Hold fast your heart and be assured this too shall pass like every night that's come before. Have you ever felt like you could disappear? Like you could fall and no one would hear? Well, let that lonely feeling wash away. Maybe there's a reason to believe you'll be okay. Cause when you don't feel strong enough to stand, Reach out your hand And oh Someone will come running 
brightest star above was created by the one who loved more than we'll ever know to guide you when you're lost what started as a still small voice is raging now and your only choice is to follow I know we'll meet again
discouraged Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart feel lonely and long for heaven and home when Jesus is my portion a constant friend is he he is on the sparrow and I know he watches me his eye is on the sparrow and I know watches me I sing because I'm happy I sing because I'm free his eye is on the sparrow mm -hmm. And I know he watches over me His eye is on the sparrow And I know he watches, I know he watches, I know he watches me. Ah, I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eye is on. He watches you and me. He watches me. And I know mm -hmm. He watches me.
I joined Barclays Bank in 1969. My first recollection of Janice is of this tall, brown-skinned, robust lady whose presence seemed to dominate all and everything around her. And there was the laughter. At that time, Janice was a cashier in the savings department at Barclays. And when they would pass those enclosures, Janice's presence so radiated that it seemed like she was the only cashier there. That substantial presence emanated from an unflagging spirit of cheerfulness in serving her customers. I said her customers deliberately because there were a large group of customers who would deliberately choose her queue, even though it would be longer as a result of so many choosing to do so. Why would so many folks choose Janice when they could probably exit the bank quicker by joining a shorter queue? I will find out shortly when, I, when it became my turn to be trained as a cashier. I was lucky to be assigned to Janice for that training. By then, Janice had become number one cashier and I wondered with dread whether I was being groomed to eventually be number one cashier. During my training with Janice, I discovered the secret of her customer's attraction. Janice genuinely enjoyed interacting with her customers. She was not completing transactions, taking deposits or paying withdrawals. She was helping people. Many of her customers were folks for whom banking requirements of filling in currency breakdowns, endorsements, completing withdrawal slips, and authorizations were challenging. For those who needed to sign their names with an X, Janice represented a safe harbor. Treating the action of signing with an X not patronizingly, but helping the individual to feel the same sense of dignity as if she had signed her own name. She would wait patiently and with encouragement as older folks reached into their blouses to engage the small deposits they had secured to their brass straps or needed to rummage in their bags which were packed with various necessities like lime McCall and fancy soda bix and bottled ginger. Janice would be chatting to them all the while about the family and things that happened since last time she saw them because she knew them so well. And all the while, there would be this full-throated laughter as they shared incidents from their lives with, with Janice. Looking back, this was quite remarkable given the impersonal silence that exists at service counters today. How Janice could engage in non these non-stop personal encounters and still accurately conduct transactions was a mystery. Every day, she balanced to the same. She taught me how to keep my tash kill tidy while conducting business, for it was easy to get out of hand. Or when I finally went on my own, I seldom balanced to the same. But I was able to keep within the small variance limit which was allocated, and I did, thanks to Janice, become number one cashier. She was glad for her soul, brother. You see, at that time, black consciousness had arrived in banking circles and Janice proudly sported her neat afro. Back then, I had a black afro, so she jokingly and affectionately called me soul brother. Janice's talent for looking after the welfare of people was well recognized within the bank. When the economy went into depression and acquiring food items was difficult, the bank established a staff co-op style mini mark who better than Janice from amongst bankers could, could be chosen as manager, a role so unusual for a banker. And so Janice became manager and brought her skills of understanding people's needs and managing demands with joy and laughter to the job. Shopping at the mini market became a must for staff to acquire scarce items at below market prices. It was evident that Janice enjoyed her time with what became to be known as the Barclays family. She was an active member of the Pensioners Association, 
Whenever I attended a pensioner social, I could be sure Janice would be there meeting and greeting colleagues, and of course, having a joke and a really good time. It was truly a joy to have known Janice, to be mentored by her, and to be her soul brother. So sister, rest in peace and rise in glory. My name is Lawrence Edwards, better known to Jan as Larry. Oh boy, look at me. I'm here to talk about Janice in front of all you that would know her even better than I do. Anyway, I'll give you my part. Janice was our closest neighbor for over 20 years. She was a sharing, trusting, affectionate, and a special person to us. She looked out for all of us. She was smart, witty, and brave. The incident she had when she went to the clinic was showing where she was brave. She, she would say, I'll be fine. Sharon and or, or Sharon or sorry, Sharon or Lisa would get us back home. That's Brittany and Natalia were neighbors that would we see come and go from Lisa's house around the corner. That was fun. They were all special times for us. Janice took interest in, also in Joel, Carol's son, who also had a newborn. And she had just as, just as much affection for him and his son as her own granddaughters. And no, yeah. I'm not a speaker, so I'm gonna try and get through for you, but it's special times for me and her. Um, she was also able to contribute to his education fund, which is something Janice would do, of course. Janice took interest in, in all of us. Janice looked after me in many ways. She would pay my bills when I was in Canada for the longest time, many years. I will miss that for sure. Um, she, would, she would say, Larry, here's your mail. Come over with a big smile on her face. She would pay my bills until the last one. She called me in Canada and said, we have a bill here for you that we must pay. I said, Janice, we'll be back. I'll be back in time to pay it. She said, no, you will miss the discount. Janice. <laughs> yes, I don't know. Ah, uh, barbecue night. I was out one night barbecuing chicken. I had a whole set of chicken on the barbecue. Looked across and saw Janice. And I said, Janice, would you like some chicken? She says, oh, yes. She said, I have some rice. She wasn't doing anything else, just rice. So we shared the chicken and rice. A moment I will never forget. Carol was out on the, my wife Carol was out on the, on the sidewalk one day trying to, trying to get the internet because at that time we couldn't really um, have that service. Janice would come out and say, hey Carol, you catching a vibe? Which was Janice.
Janice was always on the move. She had three friends, we can't say taxi people, but she had friends that, um, that she would um, be using to get around. She, she didn't chill out, she was always on the move. The, uh, the night we had the hurricane, Ivan, yes. I had a wood house, Janice had a wall house, so I had to go, go next door. Janice said, come, I have a bed and a bedroom for you. You were there in the night. Yes. I think Janice had a happy and successful life. I'm sure she did. Ocean City just will not be the same without Janice. Rest in peace, Janice. We love you. Please stand. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His compassion never fails. Every morning they are renewed. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, 
no height, no depth, no anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. With faith in Jesus Christ, we receive the body of our sister Janice for burial. Our sister was washed in holy baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore with confidence pray to God, our Heavenly Father, the giver of life, that he will raise her to perfection in the company of the saints. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our sister Janice, we thank you for giving her to us, her family and friends, to know and love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth, until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before. Through Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. Please sit for tribute. Good morning, everyone. My name is 
Sharon Alinapa, firstborn. I'm going to give you a little overview of my mom's life and then a few words on what she meant to me and the lessons I learned from her. As you know, most of you know, mommy was born on July 28, 1942, the fifth of six children. Educated at St. David's Boys School, across the road, where her father was the headmaster. She also attended Foundation and Queen's College, where she excelled at cricket and netball. In fact, in the last few weeks, I've spoken with at least three of her former netball teammates who have been happy to recall their days of presenting QC. My dad, six years her senior, started to woo her while she was in sixth form at QC, a fact that I always drew to his attention when it came to talking about boyfriends. In 1964, they're married, and in 1968, I was born, followed 22 months later by my sister Lisa. Yes, I know. I am a older sister. <laughs> Mommy and Daddy's love for each other was one from the ages. During her life with him, she set a shining example of the kind of unconditional love required to see a marriage through the good times and bad. Prior to his death in 1998, they were happily married and part of qualification for 34 years. She spent most of her working life in Barclays Bank PLC, where she thoroughly enjoyed the camaraderie of the bank in those days. The myriad stories I have heard certainly attest to this. And as Lily Paris, a former Barclays Bank colleague alluded, she really loved and valued her customers. She considered herself the luckiest of grandmothers with the birth of my nieces, Brittany and Natalia, followed some years later by the birth of my twin, Jonathan and Sarah. In Jonathan, she acquired her first grandson and that brought her immense joy. But with the arrival last October on the table, her great grandson, she was over the moon. It was truly amazing to watch the interaction between my mom and her table. The two of them shared a true discussion. As with the table, my mom and I both had a discussion.
course you know she loved to cook. Any family gathering, especially those which included aunts and uncles, family visits and overseas, including a lunch at my mommy's house, she would put on a spread that included Beijing soup to start and everything would be washed down with her famous food lunch. Mommy, I will miss your smile, your laugh, your sage advice, and your lovely personality. I know all of us will miss her famous food and salt fish. Thank you to all of you here in person, online, or in spirit for being here today to celebrate her life and to honor her memory. She loved all of you and her memory will live on in all of us. In closing, I leave you with a brief poem that speaks to what my mother meant to me. My mother's presence. My mother's presence always warmed her home with peace and security and love. She was like a gentle breeze that wanted to setting things right, creating a haven for us all. Whatever problems we had, we only solved them. Whatever triumphs we had, we only celebrated them. Whatever needs we had, we only fulfilled them. Surely such a mother could never drift far from those she loved with all her heart. Though she has left her earthly body behind, I feel her presence still. When we remain close to me, she knows my sorrow, and she enfolds me in invisible arms. I can still feel, and she comforts me. so she could not move 
until he had finished laying them heavily off. Her jokes were trite and witty. My girls fondly remember some of those jokes. Brittany, we have one of that box here again. <laughs> Natalia stopped singing and eating. I know you never tasted food as good as mine, but it's rude to eat and ham at the table. <laughs> Brittany, for the rest of your clothes, you spent good money on a pair of jeans at Ripper. So, who does work coming to a toll? <laughs> In closing, I will quote from Mum's favorite psalm, Psalm 27, which was read to her at her last request. The psalm speaks of the greatness of God and of trusting him to protect. Verse 4 specifically reads, One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. Mommy, in faith I believe that you did get this answer from God and are having the opportunity to gaze on his beauty and to dwell in his house. Mom, please rest. Please rest in peace and rise in glory. The
Let us pray. Almighty God, we remember before you today your servant Janice. And we pray that having opened to her the gates of larger life, you will receive her more and more into your joyful service. That with all who have served you in the past, she may share in the eternal victory of Jesus Christ, O Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Psalm number 27, verses 1 to 7. Psalm.
is taken from John chapter 6, verses 37 to 40. <clears throat> All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which has sent me. All which he has given me, I should lose nothing. I should raise it from birth. should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Here it is. The hymn 349, 349. Psalm, Psalm 27, part of verse 4. I ask. I ask. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Just for the record, Lisa and I had absolutely no conversation about the sermon. And so I smiled when you chose verse 4. Sharon tried at least twice unsuccessfully to find out about the sermon. And I guess it's true that all of us have our favorite psalms. 
the Psalms we turn to in times of great joy, but we also turn to the Psalms in times of great sadness. For us as Christians, they act as a bridge to take us from where we are to where we know we should be. For most older Barbadians, and a few younger ones. The Psalms have really been our constant companion throughout our entire life's journey. There actually was a time in Barbados when in schools, you were taught the Psalms. And you were taught some hymns. And in some schools, you were taught the collect for the day and so children literally grew up with the word of God they grew up memorizing the word of God for some of you uh, you have fallen in love with Psalm 23 for others it's the only one you know and as a priest and, and, and Cam and I were having a conversation about being parish priest a few minutes ago and I'm so thankful that I'm retired and I don't have to deal with people arranging funerals anymore because everyone wants Psalm 23 at a funeral and I have to say, you know, there are 149 other Psalms to choose from and then they relent and say, well, yeah, but give me it with a criminal version and that makes a difference. Before we even come out to say Mass, as we are sharing in the Confirator, in the sacristy with the servers and with the uh, Eucharistic ministers and the other priests, we say a special psalm as part of that set of prayers that we do before we come out. And the psalm we choose for that one is Psalm 43. Give sentence of me, O God, and defend my cause against the ungodly people, O deliver me from the deceitful and wicked man. Why thou, for thou art the God of my strength, why thou so heavy? And we, 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 we rattle it off because we know it by heart. And of course, we come to that very special section which we say with great piety that I may go to the altar of God to the God of my joy and gladness. It's now called by many of us as the server's psalm. And before I could be admitted to serve on the altar as a young man, I had to learn, Canon, I think you did too, I had to learn that psalm by heart before I could walk up onto the altar in robes. And before we enter the procession at the back and we're marching up with the others as priests, we are also mumbling to ourselves as if we're going crazy. But we're actually praying. We're actually saying the words of Psalm 24. O Lord, who shall ascend unto thy holy hill and to thy dwelling? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart. One of my colleagues recently had a series in his parish on the cursing psalms. They exist. Especially Psalm 69 and 107. You see, Janice Allen grew up in Barbados in a time where faith was important for the development of children. And she was at a distinct disadvantage because everyone in the community knew that family. So you had a double weight on your shoulders. Certainly, 
the headmaster's children can't behave badly. And they must always be on church, in church and on time. And the hymns that were taught in school have helped us through some difficult times. And the Psalms journey with us. Remember that hymn, All Things Bright and Beautiful? Again, there are times that I swear as a priest it's the only hymn that some people know. And even new every morning is the love or awakening and uprising crew through sleep and darkness safely brought restored to life and power and thought and of course the traditional hymns the seasonal hymns for Christmas and Easter and there are times when as a parish priest I would get a request from a family that they must have this particular hymn in the funeral service and then I have to say to them, you know, we're actually in the midst of Lent, and so singing a Christmas hymn is not appropriate. I wasn't therefore surprised. I mean, at the moment of Janice's greatest human vulnerability, of lying on a gurney, in a &E, she deliberately made a request. She asked. She could have asked, where is the bank book? I'm not sure if they know where it is. She could have asked, well, is the house closed properly and did you check everything is safe? But in that moment, she chose Psalm 27. David said, I ask. One thing I ask. And what Janice was asking God for in that moment was blessed assurance. She wanted to know at that moment, conscious of where she was, what could happen, she wanted the assurance of knowing that the God whom she served would be the God who would carry her through, who would rescue her, having been in his temple all her life, that that same God would not abandon her in that moment. You know, it takes moments like those for us to really realize what is important in life. We sift in an instant through all of our experiences, all that we have, all the things that we surround ourselves with, and at that moment, we have clarity of spiritual thought. And we weigh things with a different scale, with a different balance. I come here to St. David when I am free and I am going to spend a little bit more time here um, at St. David's. And Brother Blackman is, is sitting in my seat but I would pass Janice as I'm going out from the 615 service as she was coming in through that door for the second service. And we would exchange pleasantries, we would talk for a moment, and she would walk into church. And I hope that someone will show me where her seat was because I never knew where it was. But I'm sure that she came into this sacred space, into her familiar space, into her church and knelt down and begin her prayers. You see, for her, she understood that the sacramental presence in the reserved sacrament of the altar doesn't just make this a sacred space, it makes it God's home. 
God's temple. And it is here that she brought before God her own private prayers and petitions. And while I will never know what it is she asked God for on each and every occasion that she came and knelt in this space, what I do know is that she was heard by God. It said that every parent who loves his or her child has the same prayer, makes the same request, asks God for the same thing. Lord, let me live long enough to see my child or my children grow into at least a stage where nobody can take advantage of them. Let me allow that child to be in my life that I can enjoy that child growing up. Or to use the Bajan expression, Lord, let me live long enough that I can see them be able to fudge for themselves. I think you know that Bajan expression which we no longer use. And she came here every week to ask of God. And now she comes one last time and things are very different. I often shock my students when I say to them in class, in our church we don't bury dead people. And you can see them looking at me as if I have two heads. And then I have to explain to them, you know, we don't. We actually bury people who have died. In the Methodist Church, at the end of the funeral liturgy, there's an absolutely beautiful prayer. And a, a line from that prayer says, And now that life has ended, and death itself has passed. Beautiful theology. Because death is a momentary experience that we, we pass through like that. It comes and it goes. And Janice went through death and now has entered into a very different state. I therefore ask two questions this morning. What was the value of her life? I heard some of the tributes and I heard your relationship with her over time and how much she meant to you with all of her relationships. And we're still mourning the death of her sister. But what was the value of her life? I think that you had time to get to know her but also time, the gift of time for her to get to know you at different stages of your life and now to get to know not one, not two, but three generations coming after her. The second question is, what is the value in her death? Shakespeare says, death is a necessary end and will come when it must. But we value her Christian witness even in her death. Because she leaves now with us a legacy. And that must now be taken up by the next generation and the next generation, and the next generation. I'm sure she prayed 
for each generation in this space. When she fell on her knees here, she was asking of God. Maybe one thing, maybe two things. But she knew that this space has been set aside as a place specifically for talking to God and asking. Let me take a moment because this is recorded and can be available down the road to speak to the grandchildren, some of whom are a little bit too young possibly to fully understand the specialness of this moment. But I want to say to you, as you grow, value your family name value the things that were important to your grandmother but especially value her relationship with the God who sustained her through her life and took her even through death I want to speak to the children sorry you know what I mean Both of you have had a very different relationship with your mother. And I know that that is true. Whether it's because you pointed to the other sibling and said, well, you were closer to her because you look more like her than I did. Or I was around longer than you. Or whatever the reason. You are blessed to have a unique relationship with her. Not just different, unique and special. Remember that uniqueness and value that specialness because it was a gift from God. There are those who do not have their parents in their life for as long as you've had your mother. And while at another level you can relate to her as a fellow mother, you also related to her as a child. I will miss meeting her at the door. I will miss those random calls in the middle of the day, whether it was for her to ask, to make a request of me of something, or to just check to see how I was doing. And there were not necessarily short conversations. That's the diplomatic way of saying she could talk. A gift which is passed on to one of her children. But I, I cherish those memories. And I invite you now with me in this sacred space, her home, her spiritual home. Now that roles are reversed and she's no longer praying for us, I'm asking you to join me now in a moment of silence to do like David and just acts of God. One thing, maybe two. This moment will never come again. And so I ask you now to pray with me for her, as in this space she prayed for us. David said, I ask. And unto God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, to whom he ascribed as his just due, all might, majesty, dominion, and power, henceforth and forevermore. Amen.
we stand, as we steer together the creed, to confess the faith into which we were baptized, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, O Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's now commend our sister into the arms of God Almighty. Do so in faith to this very faithful member of our church. May the communion right here at this altar. As we say farewell to her, we pray that God Almighty may receive her at his altar in heaven. I want to express to the family on behalf of the members of this church, on behalf of the members of our Parochial Church Council, all of us, our deepest sympathy. We urge you to be aware of the prayerful support of the Church. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the Creator and Maker of all, and we are mortal, formed of the earth, and the earth shall be returned. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust. Yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, your servant, with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting. The Lord be with you. Lord have mercy upon us. Christ have mercy upon us. Lord have mercy upon us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done in earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us commend our sister Janice to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. Deliver your service, Janice, O Sovereign Lord Christ, from all evil, and set her free from every bond, that she may rest with all your saints in the eternal habitation, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Into your hands, O merciful Saviour, we commend your servant, Janice. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, in the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Rest eternal grant unto her, O Lord, and let like perpetual shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Amen. We sing the first three verses of the hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and giving life to those in the tomb. The Son of Righteousness is gloriously risen, giving light to those who sat in darkness and in the shadow of death. Lord will guide our feet into the way of peace. Having taken away the sin of the world, Christ will open the kingdom of heaven to all who believe in his name, saying, Come, O blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you into paradise, may the angels lead you. At your coming, may the martyrs receive you and bring you into the holy city, Jerusalem. May the choir of angels receive you. And with Lazarus once more, may you have eternal rest. Rest eternal grant unto her, o Lord. And let light perpetual shine upon her. Father gives to me will come to me. I will never turn away anyone who believes in me. He who raised Jesus Christ from the dead will also give new life to our mortal bodies through his indwelling spirit. My heart therefore is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy and at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write this, happy are the dead who die in the faith of Christ. Henceforth, says the Spirit, they may rest from their labors, for they take with them the record of their deeds. Man born of a woman hath but a short time to live. Like a flower he blossoms and then withers. Like a shadow he flees and never stays. In the midst of life we are in death. To whom can we turn for help? But to you, Lord, 
who are justly angered by our sins. Lord God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, holy and most merciful Savior, deliver us from the bitter pains of eternal death. You know the secrets of our hearts. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive our sins. And at our last hour, let us not fall away from you. Ensure us the hope of resurrection to eternal life to our Lord Jesus Christ. We commend Almighty God, our sister Janice, and we commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And we beseech you in your infinite goodness to give us grace to live in your dear love and to die in your favor. That when your very beloved son shall come again in judgment, both this our sister and we ourselves may be found acceptable in thy sight. Grant this for the sake of thy son, Jesus Christ, O Lord. Amen. Grant, O Lord, to all who are believed the spirit of faith and courage, that they may have strength to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience, not sorrowing as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness, and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. And this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, O Lord. Amen. Amen. Rest eternal, grant to her, O Lord. Let let her shine upon her. May she and all the faithful departed for the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Amen. Six hundred minutes, five hundred twenty five thousand moments, oh dear, five hundred twenty five thousand six hundred minutes. How do you measure? Measure a year in daylights, in sunsets, in midnights, in cups of coffee.
some glad morning when this life is over i fly away oh yeah to a home on god's celestial shore i'll fly away oh i'll fly away oh glory i'll fly away in the morning when I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. When the shadows of this life has gone, I'll fly away. Like a bird from prison's bars have flown, I'll oh, fly away, oh, fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away in the morning when I die, hallelujah. Fly away to a land where joy shall never end. Woo, I'll fly away. Oh, I'll fly away. Oh, glory. I'll fly away in the morning. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. Oh, I'll fly away. Oh, glory, I'll fly away in the morning when I die. Hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly
bless her and keep her. The Lord make his face to shine upon her and be gracious to her. The Lord lift up his countenance upon her and give her peace now and forevermore. Amen. Good morning, everyone. I would like to thank you very much for having spent this time, having come here this morning to honor my mom's memory. We truly appreciate it. She would have definitely, this was the sort of event that she would have loved. Family coming together, friends coming together, and being in her presence. We ask 
that you continue to carry us in your prayers as we continue in our bereavement. And once again, as you go out there and you continue your day, please stay safe. And again, thank you so much for your time and your prayers here. This concludes the funeral service. Thank you so much.